Hello, uh, here we can see the specimen of a brain. What we're looking at uh, on this surface is the inferior view of the brain with the temporal lobes here and the cerebellar hemispheres. And this would be the medulla and this is the pons. There is an obvious uh, area of blackish discoloration here. The surface we're looking at is the arachnoid mater overlying the pier mater. And the main pathology really is viewable on this surface. We see these blackish areas. Um, what this is, are areas of hemorrhage within the subarachnoid space. So it's still below the arachnoid meter and just overlying the pier meter. Now the reason for this hemorrhage is actually visible over here. And you can see this rounded structure. If I were to turn it, you are actually able to appreciate that is almost like a berry, it's a berry-like shape. This is an example of a ruptured berry aneurysm from the circle of Willis, where there is hemorrhage going into the subarachnoid space. And this is one very classical cause for subarachnoid hemorrhage. And if you think about the clinical uh, manifestations, this would appear as a sudden, very severe headache. Uh, most of the time, these patients will be quite young, perhaps in their 20s or 30s. And usually, there's no known history. Um, occasionally, this may be associated with polycystic kidney disease. So in such patients, um, often cerebral imaging would be a useful test to do to see whether these patients have underlying berry aneurysms. If you recall, these would potentially give rise to raised intracranial pressure because of bleeding within the subarachnoid space. Sometimes the bleeding can extend into the cerebral parenchyma, so you can get intracerebral hemorrhage as well, and occasionally even into the ventricular system. Um, all these can give rise to raised intracranial pressure with its uh, concomitant uh, potential complications of cerebral herniation. There can also be focal neurological deficits as well. And eventually, if the patient survives this acute incident, um, when there is organization of the hemorrhage, this can give rise to hydrocephalus because it can affect the reabsorption of CSF through the arachnoid granulations.